Like so many gardeners, I have big ambitions for my little patch. I want to grow food and flowers. And I want to create a space that's really livable and usable for me and any friends that drop by. But I also want to offer some habitat to any wild visitors that decide to pass through. One of the simplest ways to do this is to add water. You might remember that last year I installed a pond, complete with frog-friendly native fish and a stack of native water plants. And while it is a thriving little habitat, you don't have to go as big as a bath. Just like we include a diversity of plant species in our gardens, offering a diversity of water points will also cater for different visitors. Now, the first water point I want to install is just a simple water pot. It immediately increases the range of plants that you can grow in your garden by putting some water in, but also it's a good drinking spot, really, for my chooks, the dogs and the occasional bird. Now, it's a good sunny spot, this. It gets a really good belt of the midday sun, and I just need to get it level, because once it's full of water, it's hard to do, very heavy. And then I'm going to put a small layer of gravel in the bottom. Now, water plants are just like plants on land. They want diverse conditions. And so to create diverse conditions in a single pond, I'm just going to use a few bricks to create different depths. So it'll give us a nice flat surface on the bottom. Now that I've got my bricks in place, it's time to add water. I use a really simple system for potting up all my aquatic plants, but there is one thing to remember. You don't use regular potting mix because that's made of composted barks, which are really light, and when you plunge them into the water, they'll just float away. So you can buy an aquatic mix, or I just use a bit of really heavy loam soil. The first thing I want to put in is something that I'm going to sink to the bottom of that pot, and it's the runners of an aquatic fern called nardu, and I've actually taken that out of the other pond. You can see it was running around. And so I'm just going to carefully sort of circle it around to make a nice little potted plant. And then backfill with a bit of soil to keep it nice and steady. And then there will be some organics in that soil. So to keep it in place even more carefully, I'm going to use a layer of washed sand over the top of the soil. And then even more snug blanket is a layer of washed gravel. And then that is ready to go in the pond. While the nardu grows on the bottom of the pond, I'm going to plant this in those margins. This is a swamp goudinia, which means it likes to grow in swampy ground but not submerged. So I'm going to pot it up and sit it on the top surface of the pond. Again, I'm going to use exactly the same system to pot it up. A small amount of my heavy soil in the base, layer of sand, the layer of gravel. And this one's going to get a dip to clean it off, but then it's going to sit on one of those brick shelves. Now that is absolutely going to boom away. Those plants will grow beautifully. It's going to look gorgeous from the house. But I am not going to add anything else to this water pot. No fish, because as some of you might have noticed, it's actually made of copper. And there is a chance that some of that copper will dissolve in the water, which makes it unsafe for fish and frogs. It also means that mosquito larvae don't breed in here, which is a benefit for me. So this is going to be a drinking point for my chooks, for some visiting birds and even for squid. And I think it's going to be a gorgeous part of the garden. I've talked to you before about this treasure garden. It's down the side of my house and it brings me so much joy in a small space. 
And I was watching some birds the other day and it occurred to me, if they feel safe there, it would be the perfect spot to offer them some water. So I want to put in a couple of bird baths, nice and high free of predators, and they can really enjoy that and rely on it. I've made some really simple brackets to hold the baths. These are just off the shelf pieces bolted together. And then I've used some furniture pads to put a nice bit of padding for those bird baths to sit on. I've put one already up above my head height and then the other one I want to nestle right in this calistamon because I reckon that's going to give fantastic cover for whoever wants to visit. Again, I'm trying to get that relatively level. It's never going to be perfect on a wonky old post, but I want to make sure that once the bath goes on top, that it holds the water. For the bath itself, I'm just going to use some terracotta sauces. They're really easily available and they come in all sorts of different sizes. And it will fit really nicely onto those brackets. And they could just sit there, but a heavy bird might tip them up. So to give them a sort of loose adhesive, I'm just going to use some silicon to sit them on and that'll hold them in place. To further stabilise the bird bath, I'm going to add some rocks and bricks and I'll put them on that fence post side of the bird bath. And of course, it'll help to counterbalance any large birds that land, but it also acts as a little stairway for smaller birds that end up in the bath. Because I'm going to get a little bit of dripping down onto this part of the ground every single day, I'm going to put something that I think is going to like it. It's a Duga australis, a little bugleweed with a little blue flower. I've been wanting to try it in the garden and I reckon this is the perfect spot. The last water point I want to put in is at absolute ground level because one time I saw a blue tongue lizard passing through this part of the garden and so I installed a little terracotta pipe to act as a scurry and hidey hole for reptiles. And I want to pop this down just near there. And then of course, any excuse for a plant this is the little ruby salt bush. It's Enchilina tomentosa. It's a lovely little soft foliage plant, but it also produces a little edible berry. I quite like to snack on them, but they're also really popular with lots of lizards and skinks. So this one is for the blue tongue. There is no doubting the power of water in the landscape, but it can also bring such change in a garden. Increasing the diversity of water that you offer not only lets you grow a huge new range of plants, it can also increase the visitors that might stop by.